Hello, this is a tutorial on creating visuals inside Ableton Live. And to do this, I'm going to be using a suite of Max for Live devices called Zwobot. If you're new to Zwobot, I'd recommend you go back and watch some of my previous tutorials, and I'll put a link to those in the top right corner of the screen now. If you're interested in buying Zwobot, there's a link in the description. It's a suite of around 70 to 80 separate Max devices for a bunch of different kind of visual effects and visual generators. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at the Prism device, which creates a kaleidoscope effect. So I've got this image that I've loaded in to my video deck. I've already connected the Prism device to my player. So if I switch this on, we can see what that's doing. We've got four dials here. So rotation. As soon as you turn that up, it's going to start to apply auto rotation. So the image will automatically rotate. If you move it to the right, it rotates to the right. If you move it to the left, it rotates to the left. And the further along you move it, the faster the rotation is going to be. And then when it's in the middle, it doesn't rotate at all. This button here basically just resets it to the furthest left setting. So if you've got it here, you can just tap this R button to put it back down to zero. One thing to bear in mind, as soon as you've rotated it somewhere, if you put it back to the middle, it's gonna pause it where it left off. So if you wanna reset it to where it was in the beginning, you can just slightly move it and then put it back and it'll reset because it won't immediately do that. So you need to move it and then reset it. Under here, we've got density. This controls how big the kaleidoscope effect is and how complex it is. So as you turn it up, you can see the image is getting smaller and it's getting multiplied. So you're going to get a much more complex prism effect. So if you want to be able to see the details of whatever your visual underneath is, you probably want to keep this quite low because as you bring it up, you're not going to be able to see it as much. Offset will offset the visual underneath, so it'll move it around. And then Texture Shift does a similar sort of thing. I'm not sure exactly what Texture Shift is doing, but you can see it's moving the image around. So these two dials can be used to alter which parts of the underlying visual are going to be seen most. All of these dials have both sound responsive controls and beat controls. So I'm going to add a beat control to this texture shift. And my master beat control is currently off, so I need to switch that on. So I'll just have it on one note. So every note, this texture shift is going to move to a random value. And I will have the offset responding to the lower frequencies. And I'm going to keep the rotation quite slow. And the density I'm going to leave where it is at the moment. So if I unmute this audio, we'll be able to see how it's responding. This is a track by Stereo Minus One. The track is called Poison In My Tea. It's taken from his recent album released on Machine Records. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to have a listen to that. So I can also change this offset to respond to the highs instead if I want. But maybe I just want to leave these two settings in the same place. So yeah, I kind of want the facial features to be seen. So let's try and make these in a position where we can see those. There we go. it look like if I put a audio responsive control on the density. Let's try that. Mm -hmm. 
And in the bottom left hand corner, we've got our usual transparency and blend mode controls. So this controls the overall transparency of the effect. And then here we have a selection of blend modes, which will blend the effect with the underlying visual. So that's everything with the Prism device. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. I've got loads of other Zwilbot tutorials on there, and I'll be back with another one soon.